Mexico, Jiao. Okay, we are live. I'm going to mention right now at the beginning of the video in case anyone comes to watch this at a later date. Um, well, I'm going to sit, chill for 10 or 15 minutes, hang out in the chat, answer some questions. Then I'm going to do like a stretching routine. The stretching routine is probably going to be kind of like my go-to at the moment. If I have some time, if I'm gonna do some stretching, we're gonna do full body, probably be about 30 minutes or so. Um, and then I'm gonna chill at the end and continuing answering questions until the camera dies or for the remainder, roughly about an hour in total. So if you are joining and it's not live, you can skip to that point or you can sit and listen and answer the questions. But everyone who has joined, thank you so much for joining. Um, if Maybe just let me know if audio and everything all sounds good. Hopefully everything looks good. Um, it's been a long time since I've done a live stream. Um, I think probably half a, half a million subscriber difference. I did a book club for a bit, something I really enjoyed and I would love to go back to. But yes, um, a million subscribers. That is kind of crazy. I, I genuinely, it's, it's, it's one of those numbers that like, until you really think about it, it's, it's very hard to comprehend. Um, and certainly something that I didn't even think was gonna be possible or ever like on the cards. So I just wanna say like a massive thank you. I, I cannot put into words uh, how grateful I am. Um, but yeah, it's just been crazy, I guess, the last like eight years or so. Um, oh, loads of people, okay. Cool, so yeah, um, as, a, as a thank you, I think follow along is probably the most popular thing that is from the videos that I make, certainly. Um, and I hope you enjoy like a live stretching class and we can answer some questions during. Uh, Danny asks where I'm at at the moment. I am currently in the south of Spain. We're near Estepona, hence the reason why it is currently sunny and not pissing it down with rain, as it would be if we were back in the UK. Um, the beach is literally like, I don't know, 30 meters that way. Uh, it's, yeah, a, a, a luxury in, in winter. Uh, Paul Kit says, very new to this, please advise on how to open the hips. Um, that is one of those ones that just takes a long time. We'll be doing some hip stretching later on. Uh, if not, I think one of the most popular ones on the channel is the, the 15 minute hip flexibility routine. You probably could do that every day. In fact, it'd be a great place to start. How long did it take me to get that flexible? Um, I mean, I've been training now for over a decade or the best part of a decade around that amount of time. Uh, certainly for the first couple of years, uh, flexibility wasn't something that came naturally. When I, when I started stretching, it was because I couldn't touch my toes. I remember that much. Um, and then there was like a period of not really knowing what I was doing, but trying to do something. And, and that was like just stretching every single night. And that kind of lasted maybe six months and I saw some improvement. And then eventually that turned into like a 30 minute daily stretching routine, which is kind of similar to what I'm gonna do today actually. Um, and I did pro that probably for like 18 months. And I would say that got me like 80% of the way there at least. So, um, I think most of the results are certainly the best I ended up doing with flexibility I saw in about three years, but it's so individual. There's people who see progress, great progress in six months. There's people who take much longer. Um, I think what's important to ask is, we have Coach Molly chasing things, uh, is like what value do you place on being flexible and then like how much time is that worth and ultimately you have to live and be in your body for the rest of your life. So do you want to be flexible or not? Basically, it doesn't matter how long it's going to take. Um, massive thank you as well to, to all of the congratulations. There's so many people. Um, I'm just going to run through as many questions as I can do and just keep chatting. <laughs> uh, where do we get to? 
how often do you train flexibility? Uh, as I said at the beginning, it was definitely every day, uh, and, I, and I saw a lot of good progress of that. Then probably like twice a week for a long time, plus you know doing handstands, doing training. I would just stretch and rest periods, and and you can accumulate quite a lot of time just by doing that. So I would say that um, I, I stretch more days than I don't stretch. <laughs> would be would be the best way to th to think about it. Thank you, thank you everyone who's saying congratulations, loads of people, thank you. It's very kind. Um, Trust trying to read through all the questions. Um, con congratulations, I have to ask what stands on working out with injuries? <laughs> um, I think I've had my fair share of injuries. Um, the last couple of years I had a torn labor and I've had bicep tendonitis. Um, the, the best thing that I can recommend is that there's always something that you can do. If, you, if you've injured your upper body, you can train lower body. If you've injured your lower body, you can train upper body. It's, it's one of those things that's like, generally, as far as I'm aware, the research does suggest that it's better to um, do something rather than nothing. You're going to get improved recovery and, and usually the case is like if you don't do anything then your overall ability to tolerate and do exercise is going to your fitness is going to go down and then when you go back to doing exercise that could put you in a position that you're more likely to see uh, re-injury or, or recurrence so you know scale what you're doing back to a point at which is little pain something that you can manage something that's not going to make the injury any worse and just be consistent with it um, maybe find a new thing actually Somebody mentioned about uh, just starting their middle split journey. I started my middle split journey when uh, I had some elbow tendonitis that was just preventing me from doing like any upper body training. This was seven, seven years ago. So I started and I was like, well, can't train upper body. I'll just train middle splits. And, <laughs> and it took me about a year of like training middle splits pretty heavy as my main focus to, to get that. Um, how long did it take me to learn press to handstand? Um, I cannot claim too much of that one because press handstand came quite easily to me. Um, I actually, within my first six months of training handstands, I was able to press. It didn't look good. It looked really, like really ugly because I couldn't really do a pancake or couldn't touch my toes properly, but um, I had the strength in the shoulders to press. That's took me about six months, but I've, I've coached people that it's taken 18 months, two years from already like a good handstand to get there. So again, um, some people are naturally gifted at certain things and worse others. Like I had strong shoulders, but I didn't have flexible shoulders. Whereas I've coached people who have got flexible shoulders, they find it really easy to get open and into a good handstand and struggle with the strength. So um, it depends what your strengths and weaknesses are, I guess. <laughs> I used to be flexible 25 plus years ago. Is it possible to regain my former flexibility in the late 50s? Um, yes and no. Uh, our tissue elasticity does decrease with age, unfortunately. When you're a child, you can kind of just like, you know, you watch gymnastics, for example, they can just be forced into splits and things and your body does stretch as you get older. That ability uh, does decrease, but certainly like I've seen plenty of people who are really flexible into their age. I think a lot of the time, maybe we compare ourselves to just um, like just the general population and most people aren't interested in being more flexible they don't use it um and you know you're not gonna be flexible it's, it's, it's either you use it or lose it really that's that's the ultimately the main thing uh, can you reckon the best book about the pnf method of contract relax um i think thomas kerr's book stretching scientifically is a fantastic book just like full stop when it comes to flexibility training uh, pavel Satsalini has a great book as well um, I think it's called Relax Into Stretch. And in that, he covers quite a lot of PNF stuff. And it's like a really simple book. Um, but in all honesty, like contract, relax, stretching isn't super complicated. It's about you being present in the stretch. Uh, and, you know, ultimately you can contract either the stretching side of the joint or the, the closing side of the joint. So if I'm going to stretch, I, I'm going to feel the stretch here. I can think about pressing and then trying to contract the area that is under stretch relaxing deeper and then alternatively I can think about trying to engage the other side of the joint so uh, if I'm in a pec stretch for example I can think about trying to pull my arm behind me using the the, the shoulders and, and you can apply that to like any stretch 
uh, just you know go into a position and try to feel like what effect does it have if I contract either side of the joint? Like what, how does it change the stretch? A lot of stretching is really about sensation, uh, having like, like a communication with your body, telling it it's not going to die, and then um, you know <laughs> you can get more flexible that way. Uh, how can I convince my my roommate that mobility is important. Um, I've learned over the years that some people just don't want to hear it <laughs> um, until they need it. You can only only lead by example, like focus on yourself, improving yourself, and then maybe once they see the benefits that comes with it, maybe they feel that it restricts them in their day-to-day -day life, then um, they want to they want to join in and 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 get more flexible. Happy had said, is the book club making a return? Uh, I would love to, but. I, in all honesty, I haven't read a whole lot recently. Um, it was something that I was very much into the habit of every day. Um, I think it's like partly that I haven't got, I haven't got like a, 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 a series of books that I've got a burning desire to read. Um, I have brought some on this trip with me. I've got like five or six books. Um, they're on the list and I've got some more alone time. Um, so maybe, possibly, I, I enjoyed it. But um, as well, I think when I did the book club, when I was like, since COVID, so I mean, four years ago, um, maybe I thought I knew more than I actually did about life. <laughs> and then I think now I'm like, I, I don't know as much as I thought I did. So maybe I shouldn't be giving, uh, like I think a lot of the books we read are like philosophy books. And, you know, maybe I don't know as much as I thought I did. So I should, there's, you know, is my opinion that valuable and that sort of stuff? Like I understand some flexibility training and those sort of things, but um, it's, it's something that, yeah, I mean, if, if enough people want to do it, then I'd be down for doing it. It helped me, like, a lot of the videos that I make on YouTube help me be accountable as well. So, like, if I share stuff about my training, the amount of motivation that that gives me to go and do the thing, if I know that, like, people aren't counting on me, but, like, you know, there is some value in my training to help other people, that's massive. So, the same thing with the book club. I, like, started doing it because it made me read a book a month, which was something that was really useful. Um, sorry, I'm just rambling now. <laughs> Sounds like we're potentially peaking a tiny bit. Okay. You can copy it down on there because I don't want to put it down elsewhere. All right. Well, somebody is saying that the mic is not is a bit peaking. Does that sound like it should be a little bit quieter now, to be fair? What are the tips to massively increase your flexibility quickly? Um, I would say if you can become female, that would generally help. Um, <laughs> just as a, as a rule of thumb, females tend to be more flexible than men. Uh, but apart from that, there isn't really a quick fix. It just takes a long time. And as I said earlier, like some people are more likely, so, you know, ultimately we have strengths and weaknesses. On, on, as a general rule of thumb, you have like strength and flexibility on two ends of the spectrum. And most people will sit somewhere on that spectrum. So if you're, if you're tended more towards strength, the likelihood is that you're going to struggle to develop flexibility or not that you will struggle to do it, it's just it's not going to come as naturally, so it's not going to come as quickly. If you'll find yourself very flexible, then strength is going to be a bit harder. So, you know, we're, we're, we're born with the, the gifts that we have, uh, and then we have, to, we have to go with it from there. Um, there's also multiple reasons why women are more flexible than men in terms of, like, hip anatomy, hip anatomy, hip, anatomy, uh, hip socket depth, and all these sort of things. Have you, learned, have you worked or learned anything from stretching with exercises with ballet dancers? I have not actually, um, just, I, the only stuff that I've seen is it's quite old school. I don't, have, I, I don't know enough to, to comment. I would say it's the same as like gymnastics training is like there's a lot of history in the sport, the discipline, and they know the way that they do it. And they, it tends to be, let's go and hold a stretch for 10 minutes. Um, and it, I mean, it works. It's not gonna work for everyone, but it, it definitely works. It's kind of brutal. <laughs> How much of calisthenics is stretching? I want to start calisthenics. I know uh, it will take some time, but is stretching a big part of it? Not at all. Calisthenics is just essentially the same what you would do in res resistance training, but instead of using external load, we're going to use our own body weight. Um, I would say that the getting into calisthenics, or more specifically, like wanting to be 
do gymnastic style training, like it demands flexibility. You know, if you want to do a handstand, you need to have flexible shoulders. Um, if you want to do like back lever, you need to have more flexible shoulders. If you want to do a pressed handstand, you need to um, have adequate hamstring flexibility. So like a lot of these things demand flexibility, um, but you can just do chin-ups, push-ups, pike push-ups, all of these things, fantastic exercises, require zero flexibility and very little equipment as well. It's like the, the main reason I love it is I can be outside and you know, hopefully weather like this, get, you know, being able to train outside is one of the main reasons that I love uh, bodyweight training. All right, I think I'm gonna answer questions for like another five minutes and then I'm gonna jump into doing some, some flexibility stuff, potentially. Mike's not peaking rather than popping, yeah. Um, only problem with doing things that are live is like when you film stuff, we can edit things. Any problems, not a problem anymore when it's live. That's not true. Any supplements beside magnesium that help with flexibility? I would kind of think that anything that encourages collagen production would be good. So I guess that could be uh, consuming glycine in any form. So you could buy a supplement form. You could use bone broths, um, red light therapy. So that would also include getting sunlight. It's going to help with collagen production, certainly on the, on the, on the light side of things. Any other supplements? I don't really know, to be honest with you. I, I would actually say that, uh, on a strange note, like adequate calories. Like if you're training a lot, I see this a lot with a lot of people, sometimes just not recovering, and um, just by eating more can make a big difference to how improvement comes, and like obviously more so over strength training, but the same applies with flexibility stuff as well. Do I plan on creating an hour full body stretch follow along? Not today, but um, I know that that is one of the more popular ones and a lot of people when I put out like the what do you want to see for a meal like um, I know I know I get I, I see comments and people are like I've done the same routine for like a hundred days in a row and I'm like I'm very sorry that you've had to listen to me say the same thing in a row a hundred days in a row so we're going to update some routines there is going to be a new one hour routine recently was posted the one hour routine which is the big five follow along so a little bit different style of stretching um, but something to to go try if you want in the meantime, but there will be one out soon. Glucosamine, yeah, glucosamine is another good shout for flexibility supplements. I, to be honest with you, I think that's like more of a joint supplement. I don't know if that has any like evidence that it improves flexibility. Um, I think ultimately the, the work you do in the gym is gonna have the, not saying in the gym, just like the work you do, use it or lose it with flexibility training. Right, two minutes and I'm gonna do some stretching. So for, Today's routine, you're not going to need too much. I am going to use this chair, which is in the background, and um, there's a couple of stretches which I quite liked having a chair about for. Uh, you probably are going to want a couple of yoga blocks as well, I would say. Um, and apart from that, we can probably do it with pretty much nothing. And I think that should be, that should be good. Any stretches that you can do during the day at work? Absolutely. I do actually have a like stretching follow along for desk work. It's a bit random. It was filmed a long time ago. Um, but there's some good stretches in there. I think there's a lot you can do like sitting wise um, and like couch stretch if you unless your chair is like super mobile on wheels and it, it slides out. But like couch stretch on a chair like stood up is one of my favorite all time stretches full stop. So as long as your work aren't going to get weird about you doing some quad stretching, that one would feel really good. And then like anything that's going to open up kind of an extension over the back of the chair is gonna feel nice as well. Um, last couple of questions. Have you got new books to recommend? I haven't got any good new books. I'm currently reading uh, What the Foot, which is by Gary, I can't remember his name. He, he the, the his thing is anatomy in motion. Um, something that I'm interested in learning more about and I'm planning on doing his course as well. So I'm reading that, like more training related. Uh, I've also read Mere Christianity um, by, what was his name? I can't remember his name. Um, another like English sort of philosopher's person back from sort of wartime era, 40s uh, in the UK. I'm, I'm not personally Christian, but uh, I got recommended it as a interesting, not interesting, but like an interesting thought. Like it's kind of a, a written essay, right? So. Um, that's the two books that I've read recently. Oh, and I've, re I've read uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Like, I loved the film for a long time. And then I read the first book. I was absolutely hooked, couldn't put it down, read it in like 
two days. And then I've got the other four or five books that are in that series, and I'm planning on reading them during this trip. Um, but I don't read a whole lot of fiction, but that book in particular was awesome. Right, let's do some flexibility stuff. Um, I'm going to bring my phone with me, so I'm still going to answer some questions when uh, we're chatting. OK. Also, Molly is here, and she's not being particularly helpful, I won't say. She's like, she's the opposite of cute. She wants me to throw this stone for her, so. That's what we're gonna do. Okay. With flexibility routines in general, uh, I'm a big fan of starting kind of head to toe. So we're gonna start with just a cervical spine mobilizer. By the way, this routine is a bit more relaxed than, than anything else. So depending on your time zone, it might not suit, but we're gonna go with it. So we're gonna do Lewitt technique, arms out to the side. Chest nice and upright. We're gonna to look to one hand, we're gonna lift that hand up. Other hand's gonna rotate down. So we're gonna just gonna try and go for like the most rotation that we can get out of the shoulders here. So looking towards the hand, breathe in, twist. Twist the other way. And we're just gonna move on the breath. And each time we're like, okay, my bottom hand, how far can I get that thumb facing down? And this top hand, how far can I twist this thumb out? Just going to do a few more breaths here. Put that out of the way, Molly. Okay, one more each side. And I'm gonna start on the next, the left side. I'm gonna do just a, a quick neck stretch. So I'm gonna try and turn my head to the right hand side, grab my hand in this L shape. I'm gonna place the thumb behind the ear. So I've got like a nice, I can grab the base of my skull. And then I can try to think about pushing my head over. So I'm gonna push it to the right hand side. And whilst I'm doing that, I'm going to think about trying to pull my shoulder down. So I'm actively using the shoulder to kind of create the stretch. So I'm feeling about, feeling the shoulder like rotate round. So in the same way as like if you lift the hand up, rotate round. And then pulling the shoulder down. Should feel like a stretch. Sometimes you're going to feel it go all the way down the middle of the back. I'm just going to get the, I'm going to hold this a second. I'm just going to get up the stream so I can read the questions or any comments as they're coming in. I'm going to swap sides as well. So same thing here. I'm just going to look to our right hand side with the, uh, sorry, left hand side with the right hand. We're going to L shape at the base of the skull. I'm going to try and pull my shoulder away. I'm going to lean towards the left hand side and get a nice stretch down the side of the neck as I said potentially going into the back as well. Just nice deep breaths here. For some reason, I can't find the live stream on my phone. So, I might get Tim to read me out some questions because I can't get it going. Okay, next done, we're gonna move now just to the shoulders. So the first one I like to look, the first one I like to work on opening is uh, shoulder extension. So German sit position. So sitting on the floor, palms facing the way here. The one with this one is I, like the width of the hands changes the stretch massively. So depending on how flexible if you are, if you're like, if you find it very easy to get the hands behind you and lift in this shoulder extension position, you can go narrower. 
but I prefer to go a little bit wider. And then I really like to think about lifting the chest and trying to roll the shoulders backwards. So I'm gonna try and externally rotate the shoulder. Think about pinching my shoulder blades back and together. And then from here, I'm just gonna move forward slightly as I can. So locked out arms, always pushing the shoulders away. And just keep shifting forward. A lot of people might find with this one that the elbow kind of can get a bit sore. Uh, and usually that's because like the shoulders are rounded and then all of the hinging, all the force is going into the elbow. So just really try to feel like the shoulders are active. You're having to work to kind of hold this position, almost thinking about like sliding the floor away from you, behind you, to go deeper into the stretch. See, how to balance gym with mobility? It's a good question. Um, I'm gonna answer it in the next stretch. Which we're gonna grab the chair for. The chair is a good friend when we're doing some stretching. So I'm just gonna go into what would be a butcher's block. So I'm gonna rest the elbows about shoulder width. I'm just gonna press the hands together and let gravity do its thing. And just try to drop my shoulders down. So when balancing like gym with flexibility, um, ultimately you can turn every exercise that you do, especially in the gym, into a flexibility movement if you want to. So for example, we can do like a lunge um, and a lunge would be like a normal up and down lunge or we can do something like a split squat and a split squat would be something where we like would shift, I'm just gonna demonstrate, <laughs> would shift like much more forward. So a lunge might be something that's more like up and down or a, lunge, or a split squat, we'd go more diagonally up and down. So we get loads of hip extension, loads of dorsiflexion, um, and it's a fantastic flexibility drill. It's like the same thing with Romanian deadlifts as well. You know, go a little bit lighter on the weight, try to use more of a range of motion, and you actually probably will find you'll get more flexible. Okay. Presuming that you've hold the butcher's block for this time, I'm gonna go straight arms now. So I can rest the forearms on, my straight arms instead i'm just going to try and sink my shoulders as much as possible so i'm going to get something that really sucks for me is my thoracic extension my shoulders just do not enjoy it so this one i just like to sit and basically think about breathing trying to inhale like expand the rib cage as much as possible For weak shoulders, um, depends on how weak. If you can't do a chin up, um, like that's, you know, we're working with that sort of level, then I would say hanging is one of the best ways. Because hanging, you just have to take your body weight through your hands. You, you build grip strength, um, you build grip tolerance, and then you, you get your shoulders to load like your entire body weight, but in a more passive way. And then from there, um, we're really just doing the basics, push ups. Um, and bodyweight rows, uh, fantastic. Um, you really just can't go wrong. And just accept that you maybe have to start in a place that uh, you think that you know you should be starting ahead of. Um, I think a lot of times that even even if people are super strong, um, they will have like maybe something that they're weak at and they should be training and they, they maybe won't accept the level that they're at because they think that they're better. I know I certainly do that sometimes with certain drills or exercises. Like, I don't know, I wanna get a bit better at doing running. And I'm like, mentally it's a hard thing to take a step back and be like, no, I just need to accept that I suck at running and I need to do some really easy stuff. And I can't just go out and do the hard things. Um, and just, you know, any anything you learn has to have that, that initial I'm gonna suck at this phase and then you get through it and you can start enjoying it. Okay, shoulder stretching. I'm gonna come now to the floor. I'm just gonna move this chair away. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm gonna do a glute stretch. So this one uh, was in a recent video and I wanted to chuck it in here because I really like the stretch and I think what, if it's done correctly, it's gonna feel really good. So um, I got this one from a friend, Garrett, uh, G Money Movement on Instagram, like the, the variation. 
Um, you're going to do your left leg first and place this on an elevation. And the reason for this elevation is that we want to think about the stretch coming from the hips. So I'm going to try, and I'm almost just doing like a normal kind of what, what you often see in the gym people do to stretch their glutes. But what I'm thinking about doing is I'm trying to get my right hip lower than my left hip. So I'm trying to like twist into this position and then sink back. And it, you can go through this position and not get much stretch. Or if you really like try to think about leaning into this left hand side, you can get quite a, quite a nice stretch in a part of the glute that you wouldn't get from doing like the pigeon or something else. But it's a little bit about like spending some time and really trying to figure out this like twisting. So just shift around if you need to. We're gonna spend 45 seconds or so here in total, so maybe another 15. Recommendations for opening up adductors in a warm up. For adductors in a warm up. Mm -hmm. Shoulders too, but I think. Shoulders too. Out. Yeah. Um, I mean, for the shoulders, opening up in a warm up, just like just doing some hanging is fantastic. We're gonna swap sides here. So I'm gonna put my right knee down. And same thing, so I'm gonna let this leg, I'm not just having the knee going straight back, I'm gonna externally rotate it slightly so that my left leg is on the inside. And then from here, I'm gonna try and push my hips backwards, but I'm gonna think mostly about dropping my left hip down. Um, adductors in a warm up, I would say to be honest with you, like unless you have anything specific, Doing some squats um, and then like progressing to a Cossack squat is probably gonna be one of the best options. Like just dynamically moving through, you could get in a Cossack squat, move side to side, sit in a squat, push the knees out. It's gonna stretch the adductors unless you have something specific like I need splits or middle splits or straddle or something for whatever it is you're doing, then you might wanna sit in a pancake or a, or a middle split. Okay, it's another Another five seconds here. How to increase the range of motion in joints to avoid injury going through? I can relax. Increasing the range of motion in joints if you're an athlete. Um, for injury prevention. Um, so, next up. Let me do, let's go into a, uh, so almost like a pigeon position. So we're gonna get into a 90-90. And we're just going to tuck both legs in. So we're coming in a figure of four. So we've got right leg tucked, left leg tucked. Right leg is an internal rotation. And we're just going to try and twist. And you're going to think about trying to get this right hip. We're going to try and lean into it. So we're pushing it down towards the ground. That's going to move this leg into internal rotation. You're going to feel like a stretch probably kind of deep inside the hip socket. Um, the more you can think about just trying to like twist the torso into it as well. Um, we're just going to hold this for about 30 seconds. So in terms of injury prevention with stretching, I don't think there is like a massive amount of benefit. The, in terms of like just generic, the benefit would come from you need to be as flexible as the sport that you're doing requires. So uh, actually, if you, if you maybe go like watch some clips of tennis, for example, you'll see some crazy clips of like uh, Djokovic doing basically a full middle split to like grab and hit the ball. Like in that instance, you do need quite a good level of flexibility, but that's not the only way that you can solve that sports problem. So I would look at your sport and I'd be like, okay, what positions am I in? What flexibility do I need? And then try to make sure that you have a bit more than that. We want to have like, our capacity wants to be 120% or something, it wants to be greater than what we demand in, in the sport. I'm sure the basics, adequate hamstring flexibility, adequate hip extension is, is definitely not going to hurt. Okay, from here, we're going back out to the 90-90, and we're actually going to roll this foot further back. And we're going to think about just like rolling in and out of a pigeon position. So I like this one a lot um, to do over maybe like a couple of minutes. And kind of, I'm just trying to ease my way into it. And what I like to think about doing is like really trying to pin down this front leg. So I'm just rolling over. I'm trying to get my hips twisting 
and feeling the stretch just in this left hand glute. So sort of roll into it. Maybe it goes up to like a seven or eight. And then I just come out a little bit. Um, and I can find that like sometimes um, with a lot of glute stretching, it can put a lot of pressure on the knees. And if we just spend a bit of time like moving into it and feeling it in the hips, we can get into a better position and just get a better stretch. So I'm just trying to think about just rolling this hip over basically. So we're going to do a couple of minutes per side. So make sure the stretch isn't like seven out of 10 pain. You decided you want to hang out for a bit of a stretch then rather than be an absolute psychopath with a tennis ball. Okay. <laughs> the real star of the show has turned up. Oh, I'm just the placeholder. <laughs> Oh yeah, there are quite a few follow-alongs at this point. Um, I mean, in all honesty, the, 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 most, the most viewed one is probably one of the best ones to start. Any of the beginner series. With the, with the, like, the thing with flexibility is that it's often so specific that like, you could do a routine that I have and the routine that I make is generic. And you might go through it and you might be like, this one's really easy, except this one movement. It's one movement that I really suck at. And it's like, just go through maybe like four or five of them, give them a go, and then be like, I really suck at this particular move. And maybe it's something to the hips. Okay, and I'm like, okay, let's do more hip flexibility. Maybe it's something on the shoulders. Okay, let's do some more shoulder flexibility. Okay. I think Molly says we're done here. We're going to do the same thing, but on the other side. So hip swivel round to the other side. That 90-90 position. So this front leg is out at 90. We're just going to kick that foot back slightly and we're just gonna try and roll the hips over. And just really feel that like, as I'm pulling my left hip now, almost towards my right foot, I'm just increasing that stretch and then coming out of it. Molly has two modes, by the way. She's either like super cute, cuddly, or nothing else in the world matters apart from a tennis ball. I'd say this is like almost the in-between. She has both her favorite things. Recommendations for the torn labrum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm sorry you had a torn labrum. Uh, the, the question was recommendations for a torn labrum. Um, this is something that I've struggled with myself for the past two years. And it does kind of suck. There's, there's a lot of injuries that suck. Um, this is one of the ones that sucks a bit more. Uh, which, by the way, we're holding this for like two minutes. So it's like a very easy stretch that over that two minutes, we're trying to rock a bit deeper in. Um, so the thing with the labrum is that it's, it's a, almost like a passive structure of the joint. So the labrum is the thing that goes, it, it almost like is the, uh, like the gasket that the, the, the shoulder sits in. So it keeps it nice and tight. Once you get a tear, there's just this little bit more laxity and lack of stability that can be a real problem. Um, and it just means that the active structures, so the muscles around the joint, your rotator cuff, your bicep, pecs, etc., they're just going to have to work a bit harder to keep the shoulder stable. So um, all I can talk about is my own journey, but I really had to work a lot on just getting into movements that felt very comfortable, like it almost felt too easy, but I could really feel my shoulder like actively working and stabilizing. Um, isometric holds are fantastic, like just, you know, doing, uh, doing a push up and pausing 10 seconds at the top, 10 seconds at the middle, 10 seconds at the bottom. That just builds like a lot of awareness um, and it helps you load up. And, and then, yeah, just building up gradually. I think I've kind of covered a lot of the, uh, flexibility stuff I've done on, oh no, sorry, the strength stuff I've done on, some, on various uh, videos, vlogs from recent times anyway. Right, I think we're done with the pigeon. We're gonna come now to a pancake position. If you cannot sit in pancake and fold forward and not feel like you're actually having to just like hang on to stay there, if you're, if you're kind of falling backwards, it's absolutely fine, it's not a problem. Um, we just want to use gravity to our advantage. So instead of being sitting, you're just going to stand in a comfortable straddle and let gravity do its work. 
nothing wrong with this. It's a, it's an absolutely fantastic stretch. It's just going to feel way better than seated if you cannot sit comfortably. If you can, they're going to be on the floor. So this one, we're just going to, I'm, I like to move in just slowly, get to like a moderate stretch and then just try to feel about in it a little bit. So I sort of roll the hips side to side. As I mentioned earlier a little bit about contraction, so I like to think about trying to maybe like squeeze the quads. So I'm going to press the knees into the ground or just squeeze the quads in general. Flexing the feet just changes the stretch a bit and it just helps like you feel looser and get a little bit lower. I'm just going to grab a yoga block or two. And I said this is a very chilled out stretching routine, so rather than just like hanging in free space, I'm just going to give myself like something to rest and relax onto and then look to go deeper over the period of another 60 seconds or so. Is, <clears throat> is 20 minutes a day realistic for flexibility improvements or is it nothing? 20 minutes a day for flexibility improvements is huge. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's massive. Um, the evidence like around flexibility training is there is good evidence that you can see significant change from five minutes per week, but that five minutes is like in a position. So example, I could see improvements in my pancake if I spent five minutes here per week pushing myself. So I could do that a minute a day for five days, or seven days even, that gives us like seven minutes. Um, I would say that you, you, could, you could do more than that would be good. But with 20 minutes, you know, you have maybe 10, 15 positions that you could spend a minute in and then you're going to see improvement in. I would just, I would suggest doing less and doing them with a bit more intensity, maybe doing a couple of minutes a day or something and you'll, you'll see some good change. So yeah, 20 minutes is amazing. You can do anything for 20 minutes a day and you're going to see great improvements in your life or, or whatever it is that you choose to spend the time doing. Cool, we're just gonna come out of that and move to the next stretch. So we've done a little bit of fold and forward, a little bit of flexion, we're gonna do some extension. This is gonna be using the chair. You don't need the chair though in this instance, but um, I personally prefer the stretch. Somebody mentioned earlier about uh, doing a couch stretch or stretches you can do at a desk. Doing a couch stretch on a chair is like one of the nicest stretches. That is, quite literally what it's called. So the main thing with the couch stretch that a lot of people get wrong is they just try to like sit back and then they just arch their back into it. So come a little bit more forward, maybe there's something that's like a four out of 10 and you're gonna really think about trying to tuck your hips under. So squeeze your glute a bit, try to pull the pelvis in. If you imagine you're like, your pelvis is a bowl of water, try to spill water out the back, try to tuck it under. And then keep that and from there, you can then push back into it and you're going to get a solid stretch over the quads. I'm just going to hold this again about a minute per side. So a question about shoulder blades, you mentioned that this was answer in a live stream but effectively boils down to imbalances and ability left and right. I see. Imbalances between different sides is the question in regards to shoulder flexibility. I, I have, <laughs> again, experienced all sorts of that. Um, especially between left and right, it's perfectly normal. Um, you know, we're left and right-handed. We're gonna have differences between sides. Um, oftentimes, it might not be a problem. So say, for example, you play golf or you play tennis, you're gonna have these differences in rotation between sides if it is like massive. Like if, if you can get one hand all the way up and then your other hand, you can only get like part way up. We wanna improve that, um, but I wouldn't worry if it's maybe like 10% difference. Uh, we're just gonna swap sides now. So that was the right-hand side. We're gonna do the left-hand side. So really wedge the knee right back in there. Get that hip tuck, glute engaged, and just lean back into it. Um, and then apart from that, if you do wanna even things out, just choose stretches that are unilateral. Um, you could not stretch the good side at all if you wanted to and only stretch the bad side. Uh, generally speaking, like a two to one ratio if you want to improve flexibility in general and get then the, the, the worst side to 
level up. Um, and then usually if you've got a limit in flexibility, there's probably going to be a limit in strength as well. So just having a look at like, oh, I can only do bicep curls with six kilos on my left arm, but I can do 10 kilos on my right arm. Like, again, you want to fix that. Um, you know, but don't stress, we're, we're human beings. We're not perfectly symmetrical. <laughs> oh yeah, so a few people are asking where I am. I am currently not in the UK, as you can probably tell by the weather. Uh, I'm in the south of Spain. We're in uh, near Estepona. Um, I actually made an entire video about this fairly recently. All right, we can come out of that stretch a second. Um, when I first started doing this as a job, I was doing some coaching and uh, I sort of had the I wanted to be able to do it uh, anywhere. I wasn't able to make it happen at the time, and like five or six years later, I, I had the opportunity. So that's why we're here um, for for some sun. Okay, we're going to come into an elevated uh, elephant walk. So you can do this on the floor, but I do like just to have like a little bit of elevation, something I can rest my hands on. And I'm just going to try and do like my friend Angus, who who owns Lyft. He calls this like all the sexy ladies, <laughs> like, like Beyonce. But basically it's like, we're gonna try and straighten one leg and we're gonna bend the other. So I'm gonna think about pushing, both knees are gonna run like in parallel. So I'm gonna push one knee as far forward as I can and bend it, straighten the other one, and then switch sides. Get a real nice like shift in the hips on this, it's beautiful. Such a good stretch. All right, another question. We'll be here What's for about six seconds. <laughs> What's my one-arm handstand look, training looking like? It is sadly uh, not looking like anything at the moment. Um, and I haven't, I, I feel bad about it because I spent like three years, I don't know, six or eight hours a day, not a day, six or eight hours a week training one-arm handstand. And uh, I guess once I eventually got it, I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> What's next sort of thing, so. Um, uh, I did continue to train it, and then since my labor industry, I haven't. I started training it again recently, and I just, I didn't have like. It's still, it's still there or thereabouts, but the enthusiasm isn't there. Um, I'm sure I'll come back to it when I've got like more time and energy. But it's, handstand is one of those skills that you need a lot of free mental space to go and train it because it involves a lot of failing, and when you have like limited time to train. Not that I have limited time, but when you want to dedicate time to training and you're like, do I really want to spend 30 minutes maybe not doing super productive training when I could spend 30 minutes doing a lot of good stuff? It's like, yeah, hands down, you need free time. Cool, we're done with that one. Uh, we're going to move now just to a couple of like chilled out finishing stretches. Um, so for this one, I would recommend grabbing a yoga block and I'm going to continue to use the chair, but you don't need the chair. So. I'm going to place them on the floor, a couple of yoga blocks height. You could do one yoga block height, depends on how flexible you are. We're going to do um, some thoracic extension. So I'm going to line this up. I want basically the bottom of the blocks to be right around my mid thoracic and then the top of the box at the spine. I'm just going to grab hold of the chair, use it as a bit of an anchor so I can sort of like pin my hands down. Now again, a nice stretch over my chest, over my thoracic spine. I'm going to sit and breathe for a second. So one of the things with like any bridge thoracic spine sort of training, if you can get some nice deep breaths where you really think about expanding the rib cage and then breathing out, it's going to help the ribs move. And it's going to help you get a bit more comfortable. Uh, if you can't breathe, then your body is saying that holding the position is more important for survival than breathing and breathing is kind of important for living. So. <laughs> do I use weight training to improve my muscle gains? Uh, you do use, I use weight training. Um, as I said earlier, I think like body weight training is just resistant training using your body. I like to use a mixture. I think with legs, body weight is not enough. Maybe you could get away with doing sprints and some basics, but doing some squats, some heavier stuff is, is useful. You're going to have to, in life, uh, lift things up and training for that is kind of useful. 
Right, if you want to, we're just going to hold this for another like 20 seconds. But if you want to, you can think about tucking the knees in. So that's going to flatten the lower back and push more requirement for extension through the thoracic. Ankle mobility for deeper squat. Um, so, just another 10 seconds, because this is kind of intense. Oh, beautiful. All right, I'm just gonna move those uh, blocks to the side, and we're gonna stay on the spine. I'm gonna do some rotation. So, I'm gonna drop my left leg to the right-hand side. And I'm gonna bend my right leg, I'm gonna grab the foot, and I'm just gonna let Gravity, pull this knee down towards the ground. Um, ankle flexibility, I think we've got a bunch of videos on it, um, in all fairness. Um, so I will just say that it is one of those ones that for some people, it's just super stubborn. Um, the calves in general are really stubborn. Like they are built for standing and walking and doing exercises for long duration. Uh, so if you're gonna stretch them, you need to stretch them for a long duration. Um, the, the sort of the protocols I've used in the past with people has been like three to five minutes in a stretch per day, like on the edge of a stairs, against the wall, um, long duration calf stretching. Not something you need to do forever, like something you might need to do for a month, six weeks, and you'd see some improvement. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, and there's also, there's like research. Uh, by the way, in this stretch, we're just breathing, just chilling and breathing. It should be quite chilled another 10 seconds and then we'll swap sides. Um, there is research, yeah, with ankle flexibility. They like strap people into, into these boots. You can swap sides, by the way. So same thing, left leg goes over, right leg comes back. Yeah, they, they fix people's ankles in boots to like quite a severe degree of stretch and then they'll leave them in the boot for 60 minutes um, and then take the boot off. Or you can sleep in these boots as well, some, some physios prescribe. So you, you can get away with a lot of stretching on the ankles. Um, but just be prepared that it might take some while for, for them to improve. Is there anything that you regret doing or not doing so far in your training journey? Anything that I regret doing or not doing? Um, so things that I regret, <laughs> uh, many injuries that I've just been stupid. Like, I could... <laughs> injuries happen because bad things so like some, sometimes shit just happens but I would say that like 90% of the times that I've been injured has been just me being stupid um, we're just gonna no sorry finish up we've done a, a lot of rotation a lot of extension I'm just gonna go into nice child's pose I'm gonna hold for just a minute or so and then I'm gonna answer some more questions but yeah um, so regret um, trying to do cool things for Instagram when I probably shouldn't have, i.e. doing like middle splits on chairs because I thought it would look cool and I haven't done that in ages and then I tore my adductor. So yeah, many regrets in that path. Um, in terms of things I've regret, I, I would like to have done or I, I would like to do uh, a little bit more martial arts training. I was gonna start doing some judo uh, before I had this shoulder injury. And then now I'm like, you kind of weigh up that benefit that cost benefit analysis of like, is it worth me doing judo and potentially getting injured that affects my, ultimately my job. Um, but yeah, I would like to do some martial arts stuff. Um, I don't have regrets in training. I think actually on that note, um, I really, I, I, I know that I've like made some videos on it, but like there's the general like, don't make this exercise mistake sort of video. And I'm like, actually do, like it's, it's not a bad thing. Um, there's, there's definitely two, two ways that it can go, but the worst way is like the person who becomes fearful of hurting themselves doing exercise. And it's like, unless you're being stupid, you're probably not going to hurt yourself. And you want to like experience the, the strength that your body is capable of. You want to, you know, use it to do cool things, whatever that is, whether you're like snowboarding or, you know, don't want to be limited, uh, by that fear. So yeah, like make some exercise mistakes. It's not a problem. You, you know, your body's pretty robust. It's hard to, hard to break it um, <laughs> within reason. Uh, cool. That was basically the routine, by the way. That was the, the rough stretches that I would tend to go to, whether some of them are sprinkled in. If I do a flexibility workout, I might do some of the upper body ones. If I do a lower body one, I might finish with some of the lower body stretches. It's just generally pretty chilled. All right. 
I'm gonna sit down and answer some questions for another 15 minutes or so, I don't know, until people get bored, really. Um, scoliosis. Yes, scoliosis. Uh, actually, do you know what? Um, I realized that I have scoliosis. Uh, I was filming some of the assessment videos and I was just like looking at myself doing some stuff and I was like, oh, there's definitely a, a scoliosis there. So, um, I'm gonna look a little bit deeper into this. It's not something that I have a load of understanding in at the moment. Um, I personally probably got it from like, a, I, I could throw up a picture, but I have, the way I stand, one of my legs is shorter, my hips got hiked, my left shoulder, you probably can see in videos that my left shoulder kind of looks like this sometimes. So yeah, that's partly from me playing golf for too much as a kid. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I don't think it makes a massive difference. Um, Certainly, like strength is never a weakness. Just you have to be aware. You probably will benefit from doing more unilateral stuff. So, rather than doing squats, try doing split squats. Uh, generally, going to be safer for for spine-related injuries. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that flexibility bits and pieces. If you enjoyed like a live stretching sort of thing, like let me know. Um, it could be quite fun to host like a. Not one maybe when I'm answering questions, but a, a more uh, disciplined stretching class or something where we uh, actually go through almost like a, a training session together for splits or whatever it happens to be. It could be could be fun to do. Uh, is running and cycling? I do running and cycling, but found my hips to be very tight. Any advice? Just you need to your you will, your body will adapt to whatever you demand from it. If if you feel like you have tight hips, do some more hip flexibility. Uh, and it should improve. Just be aware that it will take time. Um, I always, like, I, I, Emmett Lewis always reiterated to me when I was learning from him, it's like 18 months is the minimum. If you're going to commit to something, give 18 months, work consistently at it, and, and you should see a measurable improvement in that duration. Um, don't expect something to happen in 30 days or 60 days. Uh, I saw something earlier said you should do another diet video, and I definitely am. I did one fairly recently. Um, I've just I've had some nutrition coaching off a friend, Ryan Carter, like one of the first ever friends I made through uh, through the internet like eight years ago. Um, so I've made some changes and some things that I'm thinking about. So I'm going to share that um, soon for sure. What's your workout spit and how long is your standard workout? You can. Uh, actually join in with my current training program. Uh, I gave it like a way complete free on the the last video uploaded on the channel. So it's like it's called a new season of training. The whole program's in there, all linked up. Uh, four days a week, upper lower split is what I'm doing at the moment. So if you want to join in, you want to do some more strength training. There's a little bit of flexibility stuff in there. Then join in. It'd be be fun. Be fun. I'm gonna be checking in a lot of that and like I think. At least, I think it's 3,000 people or so have downloaded it now. Don't know how many people are going to be doing the program, but I look forward to like doing a bit more chatting with, uh, seeing how people are getting on with their own training and stuff. What are some of the benefits of stretching every day from your routines for a long time? I've been following your videos for four years every day now. Well, I mean, you you tell me <laughs> what the benefits are. Uh, if you've been doing them for four years, I should hope that you've seen some improvement and are feeling better. I think uh, flexibility, I mean, a lot of like any training is going to be psychophysiological, but stretching especially is like uh, one of the, it's not one, like yoga is so much more than just stretching, but yeah, there's definitely like, for me personally, I think these days, I, I, certainly like the, the routine I've just done, yes, it's nice to move in different ranges of motion, but I do the flexibility that I do like that these days. I don't necessarily do it because I want to get more flexible. I do it because I enjoy just like, breathing, focusing on different parts of my body. Um, you know, it's, it's quiet for the mind, I guess. What are the most important pillars upholding your health? It's a good question. What comes easy? What do you find yourself struggling with? Um, so I think for me personally, the realization over the past like, four years, something that I feel like I've always known but not truly really appreciated or understood is being outside as much as possible and um, understanding that we are animals at the end of the day and in in whatever way trying to get more nature, more outside time into my day. Like, that's the reason that I'm here. Like I have, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be able to do this 
Um, but even like when I was working, I would spend my, my whole lunch break was like outside. Or you know, one of the reasons I like bodyweight training is that I don't necessarily need to go to the gym. I can train outside and do it anywhere. So yeah, trying to get as much time outside. Um, yeah, that's that's. I mean, that covers many pillars. <laughs> Uh, you'd be a savage at Muay Thai. I guess I've heard a couple of people say that with like the long, like my arms are ridiculously long, but uh, I don't think that I'm enough of a savage to be savage at Muay Thai. Um, <laughs> I think I, don't, I just, I can't psychologically see myself doing it. Um, but I, I'm interested. I like gen genuinely I'm interested, but it would be again, I have to mentally be in a place where I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to be bad at something and bad enough that I might get Hit in the face, you know. That's that's fine. Where are you living? Doesn't look like Scunthorpe. It is no, it's just up the road actually. This is uh, Blackpool behind me. <laughs> uh, you've been into mobility training for about ten years. What was your background before that? Uh, my background was just being inflexible and doing like bodybuilding style training, just standard gym training, not being able to touch my toes. And I was doing. I was learning how to do some Olympic lifting actually at the time, which is why I was needing to be a bit more flexible than I was. So that's why I, I started working on it. <laughs> Tom for one billion subs. Thanks, Ross. Um, that was, Ross is part of uh, what used to be our door. I'm sure he won't mind me saying this, which if you've watched like any of the follow alongs, I think the most, the biggest follow along on the channel was like, I'm wearing a big our door top. Um, super lovely guys from Northern Ireland and I've known them since like way 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 long ago so I'm very sad that they're not about anymore but um, just shout out to them because they were like yeah supported me uh, and and were really yeah we're just really like helpful guys way 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 back in the day um, will you go back to plants training after your shoulders improve Henry yes that is so um, my personal uh, training goal at the moment is proving, proving myself wrong, I guess you could say. Um, like I've, I've mentioned in several videos, that I felt like I was back to square one kind of this last year and it's been a bit of a struggle, I guess, to kind of build back up. And really the only goal is for me to be able to get back to where I was. So I'm like, just to prove it that I can do it with the shoulders back, being able to get back to where I was would be amazing. So, um, yeah, the plan is basically to be able to do the five seconds rider punch. The original goal that I had when starting bodyweight training about eight years ago. Um, we might get there eventually. Limbs and levers are not necessarily in my favor, but I'm trying. Um, do you prefer frequent mid-intensity stretching over low frequency deep stretching to things like splits? I actually had an interesting conversation with Emmett. I would recommend checking out the podcast. We actually went into quite a bit of detail about this. And I think the like long duration or just passive stretching in general will get you like 80% of the way there for most people. Um, and then like the more intense stuff is the, if you're particularly tight and then um, like kind of closing the more extreme gaps. I was, that like reflects my own personal journey. But I, I think for a lot of people, there's a lot to be had from doing frequent exposure to more passive style stretching but understanding that like it doesn't mean you do sit and chill out and do like a five out of ten effort like it still needs to be hard you still need to be kind of trying to push yourself but you need to find that right zone of how hard i'm trying because i'm doing it every day uh what happened to the home renovation videos uh i sold my house so there is no home to renovate at the moment um i did for, for those that don't know, I did uh, I renovated three houses in three years. Um, it was my like, I just bought my first house. I was doing this as a job, had to pay a mortgage, had to go and I was like, what if I can't do this as a job? Um, so that was my thing that I should learn. And yeah, I sold my house recently. I haven't, I haven't got a house at the moment um, or anywhere to live actually, which is why, why I'm here. Um, but it, I, I'm planning on doing um, some more in the future. It's something I really, really enjoyed. Much like the physical challenge of training, it's like being able to do the work and go through that process. So um, hopefully taking on another project this year, uh, but I'm planning on not killing myself as much as I did last time. 
Is there a Mrs. Bodyweight Warrior? Uh, there is. She is currently not in Spain, and she's very sad because of it. <laughs> uh, if, if she was here, she would definitely be on camera. And she is actually more flexible than me, which she will love to tell everyone that. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to say not for long. Uh, I honestly don't even feel like I'm in the same body after four years of working on stretching and strength training. I don't have pain anymore. My high blood pressure is gone. Massive, massive thumbs up. It's amazing, honestly. Like, um, yeah, I love it. That's great. And I'm, I'm very, very happy to help. Do you have an aim in your training? I see it's longevity, uh, but I might be wrong. Yeah, like, um, I'm not a young buck anymore. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm, I'm like, I'm 29, I'm 30 this year and I'm having a midlife crisis, but um, yeah, there's certain things that I'm like, is it worth it? Just like the comment, like saying, I don't have pain anymore, I can move, I've been into strength training. Like, for me, that's important. I wanna be able to like, take on any challenge that I haven't. I want to be able to, I want to be physically limited. So as long as my training supports that, getting injuries definitely does not support that. So everything's like a, a cost benefit analysis in that regard. Um, cool. I'm going to wrap up in like five minutes, um, but I will just keep answering questions in, until that point. Uh, and I'd like to say thank you to everyone who joined in for the live stream. Um, I really, I hope it was fun. I haven't done one of these for so long and you know, like when you're doing something, you're never really like aware of what's going on. So I hope it's, I hope it's been fun to watch. Um, any tips or methods on helping people discover their blind spots, lack of my muscle connections, bracing the court, yeah. Um, I think it's one of those, so this is like the difference between somebody who is a beginner, intermediate, and then somebody who becomes advanced. Like if you want to get good at training, no matter, you can't just go out and buy a program and do the program and get goods. You have to become very cognizant about the things that you're doing. You become more aware. You understand how your body feels, how it works. Um, and that's just something that has to happen through time. And kind of, as I said earlier, like you need to make mistakes with your training. You need to do the wrong things and be like, oh no, that didn't feel right for me or that didn't give me the results that I was after. You have to, yeah, you have to make those mistakes and, and just try to be like a bit more cognizant about the things that you're doing. Um, and then you'll you're, you're notice that I'm very bad at this particular exercise versus the other things. And then you can focus on it. Do I have an EU passport to live in Spain? I do not. No, I'm not living here. I'm sadly going to be back in the UK um, shortly. But uh, I'm, here, I'm here as long as I can be, as long as Brexit allows. <laughs> we Will doing the beginners follow along a few times a week for general flexibility be enough? Uh, or should I step up? You're 47. Um, Ryan, mate, you could, you could give it a go. Something is absolutely better than nothing. If you can commit to just one time a week, it's gonna be better than doing nothing. Um, maybe if you do the full routines a few times a week, maybe if there's particular stretches that you st struggle with, just do those particular ones, maybe two, three, four, five minutes a day to focus on the bad points and you probably will see some, some good improvements. Um, Uh, Veronica asks if there's a general rule of thumb for static stretch timing. Uh, if you look at the scientific literature, it's 30 seconds, but um, I would say that's kind of a little bit out of nowhere. It depends on how you're holding a stretch and how intense. Like, I think really you could hold stretches up to 10 minutes or so if you want to. Uh, I would just consider the position that you're in. If you're in a position that feels uh, like you've got a lot of spinal flexion or something or it feels vulnerable, don't hold it as long. If it's intense, you're not going to be able to hold it as long. Um, but yeah, you know, you can, there's, there's no real right or wrong, but I would say like anything under 30 seconds, you're probably not spending enough time in the stretch. All right, last couple of questions. Um, Shelley says, bro, help me so much. Thank you. You healed my joint pain and I've introduced your videos to so many people. Thank you for sharing the love and I'm, I'm very, very happy to help. Um, <laughs> can't wait to see you on a future Andrew Huberman podcast. Uh, I don't think that will be happening, but I do very much like Andrew Huberman. Um, but yeah, super appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thank you so much to everyone who joined in with the live stream. Please let me know if you would like to see some more 
like live stretching classes. It'll be a little bit more focused than today's one. I wanted to just like answer questions and, and hang out and do a bit of a stretch as an excuse. Um, but yeah, let me know. Let me know what your thoughts are, whether that's in the chat or I'm sure there'll be comments on this one as well. And yeah, I just want to say a massive thank you because ultimately I'm only able to be here and say thanks for a million subscribers because there's a million of you guys who are like, yeah, that was useful. So uh, ultimately I get great satisfaction purpose out of feeling like the stuff that I make online is useful and helpful. So um, that's all I can ask. And I'm, I'm very, very happy to help. And yeah, just very, very grateful to, to be doing this as a job. Um, something that, as I said, I never thought that I would be able to see. So yeah, um, any other questions that I missed, just leave some comments and then I will go through and try and answer as many as I can uh, at another point. But other than that, have a strong week. Take it easy. <laughs> Catch the next one. Peace.